in that Ephesians 1 verse 6 verse that uh, Brother Zach was honing in on, being accepted in the beloved, two verses before that in verse 4, Paul says there that we are chosen in him, God chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and acceptable before him. And the question I've asked myself um, in the past is, why did God choose me? Uh, as we heard, it's not because of what I had done or who I am. Nothing, why me? I was talking to my children a few days ago and we were comparing the universe. I think they say there's so many stars in the universe, more than the sands on the earth. We were trying to look at how small this earth is compared to the entire universe. It's big and heaven is even beyond that. And out of all of this creation that God made, I think we're looking at the creation of God. God chose human beings on this earth and still God chose you and me. Why? Out of all of this creation. And there's a verse in Deuteronomy 7 that the Lord has impressed on my heart in the past where it says there, telling the Israelites, do not think that you are something special. Deuteronomy chapter 7, oh sorry. Yeah, it's Deuteronomy 7, 10. No, verse 6. Let me start from Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. It says there, God is speaking, and Moses is speaking for the Lord here. You are a holy people unto the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be special unto himself above all the people on the face of the earth. Verse 7 is a verse that struck me in verse 8. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any people on the earth, for you were the fewest of all the people, verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep his oath, which he had sworn to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 8 is what I was, I'm pointing at. God did not choose the Israelites because they were something special, but simply because he loved them. That's the answer I get for myself also. Out of all creation, God chose the earth. In the earth, he chose a few, and amongst those few, he chose you and me. Why? Not because of works we have done. Paul says that several times that we have done, but he chose us, according to this verse in Deuteronomy 7, 8, because he loved me. He loved me. And as the message was going forth today, another question that I had asked in the past of the Lord is, okay, the Lord loves me. He's chosen me. I am his. You know, there's a song in, uh, we sing normally from uh, Psalm 51, where David, uh, when David says, in, I think in verse 10 or so, that cast me not away, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I pondered on that song, and at that part I, I tend not to sing again because God himself has said he would not cast me away if I come to him. Jesus said so. I want that assurance in my heart. If I keep coming to the Lord, he will not cast me away. What I'm saying as what is coming to my heart from this message is there's a, a security in the Lord that we must establish our faith on. I am the Lord's. What then happens when I sin? Wonder what happens when I've fallen from him, fallen into anything that, falling short of the mark. I believe the Lord, his eyes are holy. God is holy. Habakkuk 1 says his eyes cannot behold iniquity. And in that moment, he turns. There's a verse in Isaiah 54 that says, For a moment I turned away from you. But with everlasting mercies, it says there, I bring you back. I will bring you back to myself. And so, I guess the message uh, comes to me is this thing we've heard many times. Not to be condemned. When I fall in to return, he will not cast me away. Turn. God is of pure eyes than to behold iniquity. And the standards are still the same in the old and the new. But he has not cast me away if I turn from my sins. If I repent and return to the Lord Jesus Christ, ask for his hand and his grace to help me, 
he will not cast me away. And that's the assurance that comes to my heart. And I hope it's one of the things that we hear today. God will not cast me away. He may turn his face from my iniquity. I think Brother Zach said something earlier that I think detest the sin in you and not you or something like that. I believe that. God hates sin. He doesn't hate me. And so the message to me today is to desire that fellowship. Come to him. Come to him always. And not feel God has cast me away. If I have a, rep if I have a repentant heart to still turn to him. I am his child. He will not cast me away, Jesus said once. Uh, you know, in the, in the garden, when there's a phrase, there's a statement Jesus said to the disciples after he came and checked on them. They had fallen asleep. He went back to pray and came back. They had fallen asleep. And when the people came to get him, there's a statement that Jesus says that comes to my mind a lot. Arise, let us be going. That comes to my spirit when I feel, Lord, um, I've disappointed you. I hear that voice. My, Arise, let us be going. Let's continue. Don't wallow in whatever. Come to me. I will not cast you away. And so we are his. But God is holy. The standard is still the same. But if we come to him with a repentant heart, a heart to walk with him and to please him, his promise is that he will not cast us away. Amen. Um, recently, Brother Zach was talking during a men's uh, Bible study, you know, one thing that really stuck with me that 1 John 1 9, um, it says that um, if we confess, he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And um, what he was saying is, um, you know, sometimes when the Lord, uh, when we, when we, ask the Lord for forgiveness and we confess and we go to the Lord and the Lord forgives us. You know, sometimes we are like doubtful. Uh, did the Lord really, you know, um, cleanse me or not? You know, we have the doubt uh, with the Lord, but according to the scripture, the Lord will cleanse us from all sin. I mean, it's usually because we ourselves don't forgive others um, completely. And we just, um, that really stuck with me. And, and uh, I want to take that seriously, you know, uh, in forgiving others and complete and not even remember um, um, try try my best to not remember what they have done and uh, and also to believe in the scripture the Lord if I am faithful uh, and confess the Lord will is faithful and righteous to forgive us from all sins and cleanse us from all righteousness um, I've been thinking about this um, second chronicles 32 um, <laughs> where um, they say Sennacherib, king of Assyria, one of the most um, powerful nations at that time, uh, superpowers, tries to invade Judah. And, um, and Judah was a small army compared to, I mean, the king of Assyria, I mean, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, has a great army. Uh, he could have wiped out Hezekiah. Um, and one of the things um, he says in verse 8, um, Hezekiah says that, um, verse 7, Be strong and courageous, do not fear or be dismayed because of the king of Assyria, not because of um, the horde that is with him. For the one with us is greater than the one with him. Um, and um, with him is only an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Um, that thing, you know, the arm of flesh, the strength in our own, you know, uh, I mean, with, he's, he's saying that, you know, Sennacherib only has army. He has mighty army. You know, we don't have much army, but we, have God on, we are on God's side. You know, we are more powerful than him. And um, that faith that he had, you know, the Lord really honored such faith and, and the angels went and, um, you know, routed that army and kind of like that was the beginning of the decline of Assyrian uh, kingdom. Um, but 
but this statement that with, uh, with only arm of flesh, but with this, the Lord of God, sometimes, you know, when, when applying it to um, uh, our spiritual lives, and sometimes, you know, some, sometimes people tell about some kind of kids, you know, who are not too smart, who are not really worldly wise or uh, street smart. Uh, you can think that, you know, how when they grow up, people can take advantage of them. I don't know how they will survive. But, uh, you know, when... If, if those children learn to love the Lord and be a disciple, those, those kids are become to be most powerful. And uh, even though they are not smart, but, but they, will, uh, they don't have the arm of flesh, but they are on the Lord's side. They are the more powerful people, you know, if they love the Lord and grow to be His disciples. Um, they will be more successful people, not successful in terms of what the world thinks as success. Um, you know, the most successful people are not really believers or love the Lord, but they'll be, they'll be men and women of power who can bring down the gates of hell and um, who, are, who are live a life of power in overcoming sin. Um, and that's what I know even me and Jerusha, were, my wife, are praying about our children. You know, even if they're smart or not smart, but Lord, we want them to love you. You know, we want them to, then, then they're fine, they're, then they're secure in their you know, um, uh, as uh, because they are not strong in their own strength, you know, they are trusting in the Lord for their strength. And and um, just like what Paul says, three, uh, Philippians 3, um, Paul is one very smart and wise man, in, in, in worldly sense, he was extremely smart, but it says that um, compared to knowing Christ, everything is a loss, everything is, um, you know, trash for me. Um, you know, because he chose that life of weakness. You know, he found that secret that you know, if I'm weak, I'm strong. And Second uh, Corinthians twelve um, nine, you know, nine to ten, uh, when um, you know, my grace is sufficient for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I'll rather boast in my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I'm well content with weaknesses and insults and distresses, with persecutions and difficulties. For Christ's sake, when I'm weak then I am strong. And Paul was content in that weakness. You know, he, uh, he kept going down and down and becoming weak. And he found that when I'm weak, you know, there is a chance that I can rely on the Lord and not in my own strength. And when I, when I rely on my strength, I'll be a failure. And I, when, but when I, when I rely on the Lord and not in the arm of my flesh, um, then, there is, then the Lord can do miracles. He can do wonders through my life and uh, not not self-pitying, you know, like, oh, why am I like this? Why am I not smarter like the other? Comparing um, smarter like the other person, you know, why am I uh, born that way, you know? But taking it as a content is like a privilege, you know, when because you have more better chance of uh, leading on the Lord and, um, uh, you know, uh, because we thought all the weaknesses and it's a struggle for somebody who's extremely smart in the world to have <laughs> to die down and go to that point of weakness and trust in the Lord. Um, but uh, but whether you're smart or weak, but the point is that how Paul um, found that secret of you know uh, going down in weakness and uh, content with weakness, um, taking an opportunity. There's a, a chance of becoming weak. Uh, where I can trust the Lord more, and um, and that way the Lord will be more gl glorified through me, and um, um, and not just self pitying, but having that faith that, you know, when I trust in the Lord, the Lord will get more glory out of me when I'm weak. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, Hebrews 11. Um, yeah, that, that really encouraged us to, you know, to see in our own kids or anyone who is um, who's not that wise or smart to, you know, there's a wonderful opportunity, you know, because, you know, uh, when we are on the Lord's side, uh, the Lord can be more glorified through our lives. Uh, amen.